Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for checking out my show, Coin Stories, where I get to hear from the leading voices in Bitcoin, financial markets and investing, political structures, philosophy, and more. Please make sure you're subscribed to the show. And if you're watching this on YouTube, like the video so more people see it and hit that notifications button so you don't miss out on any new content. This podcast does not provide financial advice. It is for educational and entertainment purposes only. So make sure to do your own research before making any investment decision and be aware of your risk tolerance. I'm able to produce this show thanks to my sponsors, and I'm very picky about who I choose to partner with. So I hope you take the time to listen to the ad reads throughout the show. All right, now to my first partner, where I buy my Bitcoin, Swan. I'm proud to partner with Swan because it is a Bitcoin only company focused on helping people save for their future and self custody their Bitcoin, not trade it. Swan offers a private client service, retirement planning, tax loss harvesting, and even home equity conversion. Swan is also committed to educating millions of future Bitcoiners through free educational resources and media projects. I actually use Swan to dollar cost average every day. I deposit a little bit every day that's equivalent to what I might spend on a meal because I actually read that dollar cost averaging daily ends up with a lower cost basis than weekly or bi-monthly at the end of a given year. Swan also produces my show, Hard Money, which reports on Bitcoin adoption and macro trends around the world. So make sure to subscribe to that as well. And to learn more and get $10 in free Bitcoin when you sign up, head to swanbitcoin.com slash Natalie Brunel. All right, next up, Bitcoin Conference 2023. This is the ultimate Bitcoin event every year, and it's going to be held once again in Miami Beach, May 18th through the 20th. Last year, there were about 30,000 attendees, and it's hard to believe the scale until you see it in person. There are incredible speaking sessions featuring the world's biggest Bitcoin voices, networking events, games, parties, and of course, SoundFest. I actually credit my career transition to the Bitcoin conference because I went for the first time in 2021, and that's where I dropped my first episodes of Coin Stories, not expecting this to become my full-time job at all, but just hoping to meet Bitcoiners and find more guests for the show. I actually went up to people like Michael Saylor backstage with a business card, and that's how I got him to come on the show. So anything can happen there, especially if you dream of working in the industry. Ticket prices go up every month until May, so don't miss out. And for 10% off, use the code HODL at b.tc slash conference. I'll see you there. I'm so excited to be here in Jackson, Wyoming for 21 minutes with <laughs> Jeff Booth, which is awesome because I've gotten to interview you around the world now. We, we might as well start a tour. Why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, how are you? How's the family? Because you're an avid skier, you're a fur trapper, you're a wake surfer. I mean, you do pretty much everything. I wouldn't say everything, but I like a lot of disparate uh, th things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Jeff, I want to chat with you because I, I just had the craziest experience traveling. And it made me think about just how there's no customer service anymore in this world. It seems like the things of value, the things of morality are just starting to erode more and more. And I, I really... I really believe it has something to do with our money, our fiat system. Because why do you need to treat customers well anymore, right? You have this big corporation, you get easy money for, for your debt, and then you can buy back your own stock, you can pay your executives really, really well, not invest in capital and equipment and all of that. And then, um, and then you get bailed out when something happens by the government. So can you talk a little bit about your thoughts on the current system of incentives and how Bitcoin could probably fix that. Yeah, and it, 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 we've talked about this before, but it has to because the existing existing system base is based on a, approximately four hundred trillion dollars of debt that is unrepayable. It's already insolvent, and we put up with a system where we elect people to tell us a lie that says we can pay it back by manipulating money faster. And that manipulation has a real cost. That manipulation of money in the form of inflation um, is wage deflation. And it concentrates up wealth in very few hands. And as, as it concentrates up uh, wealth in very few hands and systematic uh, problems in the, in the infrastructure, then it also corrupts the institutions themselves. So the institutions that are designed to protect us from monopolies of money are functioning by that manipulation of money. In other words, you could say, how could, how could it be possible that regulation could protect you, or financial regulation could protect you from losing your money 
from a system that is designed to steal your money. And, and when you see that pro when you see that problem evident everywhere in the world, that has to get worse. You realize that it's not, uh, it's not that system that protects individuals. It's that system that protects the system from, from, uh, from, from failing. And it does so at the, at, at the, at the manipulation of money and manipulating our time. Bitcoin changes that it, it, it's exactly the inverse of that system. And it's just based on truth. So as people start to see this, as one system breaks down and they start to see this and get worse, every single person on the planet has a, has a way to opt out into a new system that changes that paradigm. One of my favorite things about following you is you're really focused on the future we can build, the hope and the positivity around what life, what corporations, what business, what commerce, what economy, and what people could look like under a Bitcoin standard. And you always say, you know, work on the world you want to see. Don't complain about the one that you're, you're in that's yeah. full of all these problems. So let's focus maybe a couple of minutes on some of the, the ways that different aspects of our life would be maybe better under a Bitcoin standard, starting with, let's say, business. So, you know, today a company isn't incentivized to really give good customer service when they're too big to fail. How would business be under a Bitcoin standard and a monetary unit that cannot be debased or inflated or manipulated? Well, they're big, big questions because, it, it, because what people don't understand about Bitcoin, what the hardest thing to understand Bitcoin is they have to unwind all of their belief structure about the existing world that they live in based on that manipulation and how it works. So let's just use at the highest level. This is what it means. People who produce value are delivered more value on a Bitcoin standard and while they're producing value because margin or prices fall to the marginal cost of production and you cannot manipulate the system as they're producing value, more things become free over time or cheaper and cheaper over time. So everyone on the planet is going to experience cheaper and cheaper and more and more value forever on a Bitcoin standard. Now, if you join today, if you start to open up your mind and start to gain curiosity on that, what it means is Bitcoin price isn't going up. It's all things are falling against Bitcoin forever. And that means even if you hated Bitcoin, you, you still benefit from Bitcoin because prices are, uh, are, are going down. But what that, what that also means is there is no way for monopolies to price you out. There's no way to, to essentially use AI to remove labor and, mm. and, and keep all of the wealth. Because what that mean, what's happening today is, is all of that productivity gains, the, all of those productivity gains that should be flowing to society through the for, in the form of lower prices, are flowing up to certain individuals and corporations because of the manipulation of money. And it can't be solved from the existing system. Mm -hmm. It can only be solved by Bitcoin. Why are mainstream economists so afraid of deflation? You obviously focus so much of your, your book on this that it's the key to abundance, but why, why is the mainstream understanding that deflation is bad, we don't want it? Because, because, the, because they're measuring from a system based on credit and deflation on, based on credit is bad because that's a, that system would collapse. If prices fell, if prices fell consistently, then the real terms of the debt, which is already insolvent, uh, move up and it, it, it fails immediately. It all cascades as a failure. So deflation is terrible from a system based on how much credit we have in a system today. So, so because the entire system would collapse, they're right, but they're conflating, um, is deflation bad for society? They're, and they're saying infl deflation is bad for a credit based system. And those are very different things. And they're right. Deflation is bad for a credit based system. Bitcoin isn't a credit based system. It's a different system that is, that's outside of that credit based system where, where those where deflation is very good. It means you're getting more, more for your money all the time forever. And we get exactly the opposite right now. Exactly. How do you think that Bitcoin could address, let's start with academia, education. How could a Bitcoin standard fix, so to speak, education? Well, when you realize inside that existing system that you measure everything by and you're trying to gain more money and people are going to school so that they can have more money 
And so they can get a better job inside that system. And it's all moving further and further away from them and getting harder and harder. And those costs are going up and only very few people are getting a benefit from that. And everybody else is getting squeezed from that. Cost of school is going up, cost of housing is going up, cost of everything is going up, making it ever and ever harder for somebody to enter in today to understand that. And the exist and that's the existing system and it has to get worse from the existing system because, because governments can't allow it to fail. So you can expect more manipulation. You can expect healthcare to go up in price more at the same time as innovation is bringing down prices and removing jobs. The existing system requires prices to go up to stay, so, stay solvent. And is that ludicrous? So as, as, as we use more AI mm -hmm. to make ourselves more efficient, we feed a system that takes that wealth from us, mm -hmm. takes that productivity from us and transfers it into very few people's hands. It's insane. And it, only a new system can actually solve that. And it changes education. It cha changes everything. It changes uh, the, so when you, if you just focused on education for, for a moment, today, nobody's stopping anybody from gaining any education they want. And they don't need the system. They don't need a four year degree. Mm -hmm. um, an ec four year economics degree, how to, how to build the existing, how to, how yeah. to wire the existing system. They don't need that. They can learn themselves mm -hmm. outside of the system and learn on, on where the world's moving to on Bitcoin. What about family structure and family values? And I ask you because you have such a strong family unit and I feel like those values are really eroding around the world. But I especially see them in the United States where, you know, understandably you have two people working. Maybe people aren't at home with their children as much. They're not having children. I have a lot of millennial peers who are just kind of feeling like they're going to give up. They think the world is going to be destroyed by climate change and it's too expensive to have a house or kids. And how sad. I mean, we, we would no longer exist if people stopped procreating, right? So what do you think about just the changes in family values and structure that's happening? And could Bitcoin address that as well? Um, absolutely. But it, but it does so in a way that many people that are inside the existing system don't see until they understand Bitcoin. You understand it. You understand how, how but, but many people don't yet because they're inside a system that is hurting their time more and more. And then you have two people working, trying to get out enough money to escape the system. And one day, if I can escape it and have enough money, I can have kids and I can bring them. Yeah. And then, then I, once I have a kid, I have to work harder and harder and harder and, and that harder and harder and harder to gain enough money in a system that's moving further and further away, putting stress on a family. And, the, and all of that stress is continuing and it's getting worse and worse and worse. That system that they're feeding and making stronger by voting for people who are saying, I'm going, the debt's already insolvent. I'm going to make it, I'm going to manipulate money to make it, uh, to repay it, is actually just taking that money from society. It's destroying society. The bonds that form society, the trade between us, the love between us, what, what ends up happening is distorted when you manipulate money. And, and Bitcoin is the exact opposite system. So it brings all of those things back because if you just said, what, what should we be working globally on uh, today based on technology for, to have the exact same living standard or higher? We should be working 10 hours a week. Right. And it, the world doesn't look like that. It looks like very few people do, don't work at all. Rent seekers on the system and everybody else is working yeah. harder and harder and harder. And that's because we've transferred the abundance gained from technology to those people through manipulation of money. And, and, and Bitcoin changes it back. It, it, it removes that ability and it transitions the world to abundance. One of my favorite things that we've talked about and what that makes me think of is this idea that we create our own realities, right? And when we do feel frustrated, there's maybe a, a, a tendency to just get yourself bogged down with those negative thoughts, but then you end up creating more negativity. And yep. I would love for you to, to talk a little bit about that because I don't think we've ever chatted about it on, on a podcast <laughs> and recorded for, for the audience to hear, but you have such an interesting way of, of talking about it in and the P waves of your brain and all of that. Like I, <laughs> we we've had this conversation <laughs> off, off camera, but you know, just this idea that you have to create that world and you have to think positively and find the good and work to create value. Otherwise you're always going to find the negative and you're going to be surrounded by negativity. 
and and I'll try to do this simpler because <laughs> this is late night talk. But uh, but but yes. So so we reinforce the reality we want to see who see, and we don't know we do we do mm-hmm. it. The person uh, the person that tells themselves that they delude themselves to say, I need to make more money. Um, over and over the billionaire that does makes money at the expense of all of the family they move further and further away from their families more and more money what they're actually really doing is I'm measuring my life by how much money I have Um, and that I think I believe will give me value other people will respect me and as more people say oh you matter they do it more and more and more and the things that they they and they tell themselves a story that I'm doing it for my family, but it's really a selfish reason. And people get stuck, and they keep on reinforcing that. It's easy to get stuck. The victim saying, pushing mm-hmm. away all of their friends and everything else because they want love, is doing the exact same thing through a different through a different mechanism of uh, of doing it. And so, if everyone we meet is going through those uh, those those same things and it's really easy to do then it must be easy for ourselves to delude ourselves too and we and so i could walk down the street or i could walk into a room and i'll see opportunity crazy opportunity and i'll see a whole bunch of beautiful people where some other people will see a totally different view of that room right they'll sort of see if they'll take el salvador for example when i went I saw just a whole bunch of amazing people. And when you meet those people, you, you see this. Mm-hmm. Many people would go to El Salvador and they wouldn't see that. They would be scared to death or those people are going to mug me and everything else. And they might see the same thing back as a reflection. So our beliefs, our beliefs in what the world looks like and our opportunities on those beliefs are really a function of how we see the world. And the P wave, so that, that we got to talk about that because so I've been getting more and more interested in, in just neuroscience and how we take in information, how we process it, how we remember it, because I think the memory is something that's completely fascinating and it's something important, obviously, for what we do. Um, but just this idea that all of a sudden your your brain is the supercomputer, right? We talk yeah. about Bitcoin as our super supercomputer network, but our brains, we don't even have all the knowledge that, that we would like to write about about how it functions and how it stores information and it's constantly taking in information when we're not even aware and then all of a sudden something could happen and we notice it but we don't realize we were listening right and how does that relate to all of this yeah so so what ends up happening in your neurons is a a p3 something that you'll focus on will create a a a p3 web i use the example you're in a room of a hundred people and, and you're in a room of 100 people, and, and as that P3 wave, you're talking, I'm talking to you and that 100 people, Natalie, and, and, and that conversation is in our consciousness. And I can't hear, I can't feel the temperature, I can't think of all the music playing in the background, I, the words, what song, I can't even think about the, those things. And then somebody says my name across the room, and I zoom out of this one, and I'm in that conversation trying to listen intently and what that is 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 a new p3 wave is formed and so i must have been hearing everything all the time but i wasn't aware i was hearing it all the time because my attention focused what i what what i wanted uh, to hear and so if that's true and that is true then that means that if you can hear all of these things all the time then it's your own perception of those things of which ones you're tuning into and which ones you're tuning out of and it reinforces in your brain so if your perception of the world looks like this mm-hmm. it is what it will reinforce and you'll only see that in the world and for you it will be true right it's not that it's false you just don't see all of the other richness mm-hmm. because it didn't exist for you and it, and 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 that abundance is all around us if we could only see it well, and I do find it interesting because we're shouting, right, about Bitcoin to people. They're getting the information sort of in headlines or on their feeds. They think we're crazy, a lot of them, and it's not entering. And I think what's been interesting, too, about being in this space is everyone has such a different pain point. Um, for me, it was my family with our immigration story and losing everything in the financial crisis. And I had a seed planted that I didn't know I was searching for Bitcoin. And for you, I feel like throughout your career, but also your personal journey, you've had pain points that probably led you to Bitcoin before you even knew it. I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. And so when I, see, when I see pain or when I see problems, 
I think, oh, okay, we could create, we could solve that problem. Mm -hmm. So I don't actually live in the pain. I just, every single thing as I see as a problem, I, they're on the other side of a problem is an opportunity. That is the entrepreneurial journey. Mm -hmm. So when I understood at the level of things that I was building, um, and, and how they were tied to technology and how they was trying to create good in the world, that the overall system had to take that and, and, and hurt the world. I just saw a different problem. Mm -hmm. And out of that problem, I saw the opportunity in Bitcoin. And, and out of that, I created other opportunities in investing in the space and all of the people that are around it that are just so, such beautiful people. Mm -hmm. One thing, if I'd said on, on us shouting at Bitcoin about and other people not listening, I, you know, I say this all the time, you have to meet people where they are. Yeah. If you ask them what their problem is, and then you ask why, how do you fix it? Why, mm -hmm. how do you fix it? And, it? and you go down about five whys on how to fix it. You'll find that the very problem that they're dealing with is actually solved by Bitcoin, but mm -hmm. they don't know it. And so, so instead of it, through inquisition of solving their problem is a far easier way to meet people where they are than you trying to tell them um, yeah. what, uh, how it fixes their problem. Well, it was you who really made me think in that that phrase of if, if technology is supposed to drive prices down, why do we see the cost of living, <laughs> houses, everything going up? And when you start there and start to unravel, people do say, oh, well, well, yeah, why, why does that happen? And it's like they know something's wrong, but they almost assume that it can't be changed or they accept that things just are the way that they are. It's like death, taxes, yeah. houses going up. <laughs> that, that's, why, that's why that book, because of the way I wrote it, it forced people to kind of to wait and it, yeah. and it created an incongruence in their own mind mm -hmm. that now how do you solve that incongruence and then Bitcoin became comes a, a way to solve it. All right, we have just a couple minutes left. I wanted to just touch on the macro picture because last time we spoke and it's like things are going to break, things are going to break. They haven't broken yet, but at the same time they have, they we just have. don't see the consequences yeah. and the full impact yet, yeah. right? So what's your take on the whole situation now? So when people are talking about this, I have a hard time even so, so nonlinear systems, um, you can't measure linear. Mm -hmm. So, so, so a butterfly flaps its wings and somewhere there's a, there's a tornado, same, same thing. So what people aren't picking up and, and what they're measuring inside that system is when interest rates are going to go up, when they're going to go down, whether, how much inflation, and it's, it's, it's staggering that we live in a world that everybody knows the money's the only thing that makes it work is money manipulation. And we're talking about these other things. What rate of theft should we have in our society versus should we have theft in our society and money? And, and so all of the intricacies around when, what, everything else, I don't even care. Because I know, <laughs> like, I literally don't care. I love that. You're so chill about cause, it. Because it, it's, it's yeah. pre-programmed it's going to get worse and it's going to get worse in a whole bunch of different ways yeah. and different nations are going to look differently and they're, and they're going to, uh, they're going to collapse at different times. It doesn't matter. I'm immune to it <laughs> over into another system. And I care about this, that system emerging fast enough yeah. to hold us to stop a whole bunch of other people from getting hurt. Right. It's really just a question of time yeah. and that's what we're focused on the time chain. All right. We made it to exactly 21 minutes. Oh my gosh. This nice. is amazing. I'll just leave it at one question. You can't say Bitcoin. What is the thing that gives you the most hope right now? Hope, joy. Uh, the people within Bitcoin. Yes. How about that? I love it. Thank you so much, Jeff. It's always a pleasure and it's an honor to know you and everyone check out Jeff's book, check out Jeff's companies. Jeff's the best. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. It's time to hear these messages from my partners. First up, Fold. Fold is the best Bitcoin rewards debit card and shopping app in the world. You can earn Bitcoin on everything you purchase, from Amazon to groceries to sprucing up your wardrobe with Fold's Bitcoin cashback debit card. And you can win free Satoshis every day or even play for the chance to win a whole Bitcoin by spinning the daily wheel and the purchase rewards wheel. I have an alarm set every day, so I don't miss out on spinning the wheel and earning free sats. And it's also a great app to get someone that is totally new to Bitcoin. So if you want to join the fun, head to foldapp.com slash Natalie and get 10,000 in free sats when you sign up. Crowd Health, a Bitcoin alternative to health insurance. Health insurance costs can be sky high today, and you essentially send money every month to a massive corporation 
the health insurance black hole, as I call it. And if you don't need any health care, you never see that money again, right? But if you do need to go to a doctor, you end up having to pay even more out of pocket, especially if you end up as one of the 20% of claims on average that aren't covered. With CrowdHealth, you pay a small monthly fee that goes into an account that you actually accrue over time and is yours to use or keep if you ever leave. You can even save that money in Bitcoin. CrowdHealth is all about community and the community crowdfunds everyone's health care. So if something does happen or you have a doctor visit, CrowdHealth will negotiate down the medical bill much lower than what insurance would be. And then the community helps you cover it. And in return, you help others cover their needs. For more information, you can head to joincrowdhealth.com slash Natalie. And if you use promo code Natalie, you get six months for $99. All right, next up, I trust capital. I trust capital lets you invest in Bitcoin for your retirement with the tax benefits of an IRA. You can defer taxes on gains using a crypto IRA or with a Roth IRA, you can withdraw tax-free at retirement. And here are some important things to know given the recent crypto contagion. iTrust does not lend against client assets. iTrust accounts are also FDIC insured up to 250,000 US dollars. And iTrust does not hold customer assets or money. Assets are actually held between Coinbase custody and a custody platform called Fireblocks. And Fireblocks, by the way, underlies pretty much the entire industry. So if you're doing retirement planning and considering adding Bitcoin to your IRA portfolio, you can sign up for an account and get a $100 bonus at itrust.capital slash Natalie Brunel. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Coin Stories. Again, hit like on the video and make sure that you have those notifications on so you don't miss out on any new episodes. And I would love to hear from you. If you have suggestions, feedback, guest requests, please email me at natalie at talkingbitcoin.com. Thanks so much.